Hi, in this video I am going to be showing you the use of Sense and uh, in Pro Tools and in most softwares you can use Sense for two basic purposes. One purpose is for adding time based effects for example reverb and delay. The other example or the other use application of using Sense is for monitoring. Let's say you have an entire band recording in your studio and each of them wants a different level on their headphones. Let's say the vocalist wants more of his voice and less of the keyboard or something like that. You could use Sends again for that purpose. So here we have a guitar track. I'm going to try and add some reverb to it. Let's give a listen to the guitar track completely dry. This is how it was recorded in the studio. Also note that the guitar has been recorded using three mics. This has been bust out onto an aux track. I have now created a reverb track. On top of this reverb track, I will be adding the effect. So for this tutorial, I am going to use a nice sounding room reverb. This one. And while adding the effect, I would always recommend that you turn the mix knob all the way to 100% so that this track is generating completely a wet signal and the other track is generating the dry signal and that's how you would want to use it for mixing you don't want this to have more of the dry signal then your levelings are going to change drastically so whenever adding reverb this way always turn the mix knob to 100% I'm now going to send the output or I'm going to create a send from the guitar track going to the reverb track. In order, in order to do that, I have two banks of five cents each on, the, on an available slot. I'm going to take a bus which is like a virtual connection inside Pro Tools. I've taken bus 3-4. That means to the input of the reverb track I need to select bus 3-4 as well. So I'm going to now just play this guitar track and this slider which is the send slider this is going to control the amount of the reverb which has been added onto this guitar track. Let's give it a listen and I'm just going to show you how you can change this amount. That sounds quite good. You can even mute it that way. And another thing to note is any send you add is by default post fader. That means if I reduce the level of my track, the level of the send also works with respect to that. In other words, it's happening after this volume has already dropped. So um, that's one way to use sends and that's the default way. That's the recommended way. The other way to do it is pre-fader. That means the send or the, the output of the track will be sent to the reverb irrespective of this level. So even if it's reduced, you hear the wet signal. Even if you mute the track, it's still sent. That's not how you would normally use a send. So I would recommend to always leave it as it is. By default, it's post fader. The other thing you should probably do is to make your effects solo saved. To do that, you command click on the solo button. What this allows you to do is it allows you to play back your audio without having to go and solo. Um, the effect as well. So the solo, the, the effect will always be soloed. Another use of sends is during headphone mixes, headphone monitoring as I discussed earlier. So to do that what you do is send an output let's say bus 5 and 6. Again this will only work if your audio interface supports multiple outputs in this case mine doesn't so I'm just using a bus for this demonstration 
and always use this in pre-fader mode. The, what this allows you to do is you can send out a separate mix to the artist whose headphones are connected to this output. So right now I have muted my guitar track but a send is still going to the artist because it's in pre-fader mode. If I turn the pre-fader off, now nothing is going because I've muted the track. So I have an independent level which I hear and I have quite a hot signal of that sound going to the artist recording. So this is how you could use sends for both these purposes. You would normally set it to post fader always while adding effects that is the default setting and you would always set it to pre-fader for monitoring purposes as I showed you just now and the advantage of adding sends this way for effects is you could add new sounds you could add let's say this bass track if I want to add reverb to the bass sound I could send that out or I can just copy this effect So this way I just have one effect added and I'm not stressing my computer too much. At the same time it feels as though these two sounds were recorded in the same space. So that's how you would use sends in an ideal scenario. You can still go ahead and add it on the insert but um, it's going to be a bit unnatural at the same time it's going to tax your computer's resources. So this is how you would add sends. So to summarize, sends could either be post or pre. Post is usually done for effects. Pre is usually done in the case of monitoring. Headphone sends, head, headphone mixes. And yeah, that's about it. Hope you found this tutorial useful. Catch you guys in the next one.